With us now, Brian Walsh. He's a senior editor at Time Magazine. He writes about energy and the environment. Brian, welcome back. Thank you. So how concerned should we be about these forecasts for this summer? Well, I think we should be pretty concerned. I mean, you're looking at as many as 20 storms, maybe up to six major hurricanes. And a major hurricane means category three, four, or five, five being the highest. So you're certainly looking at a season that could be very busy. Of course, what really matters is whether these storms will make landfall. Most of these storms just form in the Atlantic Ocean and then spin off. It's the ones that cause damage. They're ones that hit, you know, Florida, the East Coast coastline. I assume there are many causes, but is climate change one of them? It is one of them. I mean, it, it, scientists are always working on this, but what we think is that it does make these storms stronger, if not more frequent. Uh, you know, your previous guest had mentioned that uh, water temperatures are increasing. That basically is like fuel for hurricanes. Warmer ocean temperatures mean more moist air. Hot, hotter air can also carry more water. What that generally means is stronger storms. You know, after what everyone's been dealing with in Oklahoma with a tornado, mm -hmm. the last thing you want to hear now is hurricanes. Can you mm -hmm. briefly describe the difference between the two? Sure. I mean, a tornado is something that usually occurs over land. It's when sort of cold air meets uh, warm, moist air. So you see it in that Midwest part of the country. It's also very fast moving and very fast forming. Hurricanes are very slow moving. They form out in the Atlantic Ocean. You can see them coming from a long while away. That's the real difference. So unlike a tornado where you might only get 15, 16 minutes of warning as we had in Moore, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. with a hurricane you get days of warning and you can get a pretty good sense as to where it's going to hit, which really helps you prepare in advance. Have scientists created better models, though, to predict hurricanes and tornadoes, do you think? They have, yeah. I mean, definitely with hurricanes, we have the National Weather Service is able to use weather satellites to track these from a long way out. You might remember with Sandy, we were able to track that when it was over the Caribbean, yeah. and we could see it all the way coming up the East Coast with a fairly good probability as to where it was going to make landfall. And that really makes a difference, and that's one of the reasons why the death toll from these storms is much lower than it used to be, because we can get people advance warning, get them evacuated if we, need to, if we need to. Should we be concerned about the hurricane satellite that failed? Absolutely. I mean, right now there are two main satellites, goes east, goes west, that sort of do most of the work here. Uh, right before Sandy, actually, we lost one of those satellites. Fortunately, we had the second one to do that work. But the last thing you want is to lose both satellites as we go into what could be a very, very busy hurricane season. All right, and, thank you. Go ahead. I was going to say, you know, today the big news is that the Jersey Shore is reopening. But do you think that state and local governments are ready to handle the financial impact? I'd worry about that. I mean, you know, Hurricane Sandy costs over $50 billion. We're still paying that off. Yeah. You know, it's not clear that we're ready, ready for a season of that magnitude again. Brian, thank you again. Okay.